get more now on the Mueller investigation into Russian interference in the U.S. presidential election in 2016 and the role of Michael Cohen in all of this. We can speak to Seth Abramson, proof, uh, author of Proof of Collusion, which looks into the relationship between the Trump election campaign and Russia. He's in Manchester, New Hampshire. Now, thank you very much for your time. Uh, I suppose the president, when he says... I didn't, uh, he's right, isn't he? He's not illegal. He was campaigning for president. He didn't know if he'd be president. It wasn't illegal to maintain business interests. It might not have looked good that he had ties to Russia at that time. There's a lot of other things that didn't look great. People still voted for him. Well, in fact, it could be illegal. There's a Bud BuzzFeed News article that came out this evening indicating that Michael Cohen, as well as Felix Sater, another business associate of Donald Trump, were planning to gift the $50 million penthouse in Trump Tower, Moscow, to Vladimir Putin. So there's the possibility of bribery there. But there's also the question of whether Donald Trump was lying to American voters about the basis for his historically pro-Russia foreign policy of unilaterally dropping sanctions on Russia. And if he was lying, there's the possibility of conspiracy to defraud the United States. Well, because the BuzzFeed allegations and the, I think they're in the New York Times as well, BuzzFeed quite some time ago, none of that proven. What about this issue? The president says, Look, uh, Michael Cohen is lying about something that was no secret. Everybody knew about it. In fact, he did say, didn't he, they had no business ties to Russia. He's kept on saying that. Yes, he said that consistently from the very beginning of his campaign. I think we have to remember that Michael Cohen is the 20-year lawyer, fixer, and consigliere for Donald Trump. And he has repeatedly praised his character over the years. So for him to now call him weak and a liar suggests that the president simply doesn't like what Michael Cohen is saying, because he certainly has vouched for his character many times in the past. And if any of this is true, if people took the risk of lying, you have to ask, of course, what they were trying to cover up. What was worth taking that risk? Well, in my book, Proof of Collusion, the theory of the case that's presented, and it's supported by hundreds of major media reports from around the world and from the last few decades, is that there was a quid pro quo in which Donald Trump got billions of dollars in assets from Russian clients for his real estate organization, from Russian oligarchs connected to the Kremlin, in exchange for, as I mentioned, a historically pro-Russia foreign policy in which the U.S. would benefit not at all, and Donald Trump and his administration would unilaterally drop all sanctions on the Russians over their 2014 annexation of Crimea. Well, we can't take any position on that, of course. Uh, all this may or may not come out in the fullness of time. I guess what the president's legal team must be looking at very closely, and the Mueller inquiry, of course, is whether there's a perjury risk here, whether the president's written testimony to the Mueller inquiry contradicts what Michael Cohen is telling them. Well, we don't have access to the answers that President Trump gave to Robert Mueller. I know that President Trump's attorney, Rudy Giuliani, is saying that President Trump's answers matched what Michael Cohen said. However, I will point out, and I think many Americans following this case closely know this, Rudy Giuliani's statements in the past in some instances have turned out not to be accurate. So there is that question as to whether the president has additional legal jeopardy based upon how he answered those questions about his 2015 Trump Tower Moscow deal with Andre Rosa. Obviously, we'll be back to this. Thank you very much indeed for talking to us. Thank you.